Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. About four years ago, I started this project, creating this little cedar spirit tree. And today I'm going to give it a pruning and I'm going to look at the roots. My little cedar spirit tree is planted over top of a rock, just like the real life little cedar spirit tree that inspired me to create this one. And in real life, the tree has seen all the harshness that Mother Nature can throw at it. It grows on the north shore of Lake Superior, gets battered by the winter winds and the ice and the snow and the, the waves. So it's a very unique tree. I've been letting this tree grow for the entire summer, gaining strength, gaining vigor. Today I'm going to prune it back as close as I can to the trunks and branches. It'll probably get a little bit of growth before winter, but not a lot. So all the energy that's stored in the tree now will get it through the winter. I went and looked at the reference pictures of the real tree before I start pruning this tree. I think all these new shoots, I just want to prune them back compact. There's no branches on here that I want to, you know, create a longer branch where I would, you know, keep it growing at the tip. So I can just prune everything back as compact as I can get the tree, getting it, you know, dense, compact branches. So here I go. So on this branch, I would prune it back to the first set of foliage there. Bring the tip off. This one out here, back to here. This one coming out the front, I've got good foliage way back here. So I'm going to prune it back short to here, like that. And then all the remaining tips need pinching. So here's the remaining tip. So I grab it at the base, pinch out the tips and that'll get the branch nice and compact and promote further branching. This one needs pruning also, so I'm looking at it. I've got good foliage back here, so I think I'm going to come back to there. And a little pinching at the tips. And that's got that lower branch pruned up. You can see how compact and dense it's getting. I'll go over the rest of the tree now, pruning all this summer growth back as short as I can get it, pinching all those tips, getting it nice and compact, and then I'll come back and have a look at the overall structure of the tree. I can see a lot of areas that will need thinning. Uh, there's some branches that have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shoots coming from one spot. So that'll have to be reduced. So every branch goes from one and divides to two. If I don't, I'll get all these bulbous bulges all over the tree, which on this tree wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because it is supposed to be a gnarly looking tree. but. I don't think it would. Uh, I, I don't think it would suit the style. You can. I, I've actually got a good bulge here that I'll show you, that uh, will need reducing back. If I come in and show you this branch, you can see at the end of the branch is kind of it starts off quite skinny the branch and then it's kind of got a bulbous end on it. So that needs to be, you know, reduced back. There's too many branches coming off from one spot causing that swelling, which looks kind of ugly, even on my little cedar spirit tree. So that'll be coming, a structural pruning, but for now I'm just going to keep pruning back all these vigorous shoots, taking them back. 
here's a rocket branch and you can see on the rocket branches you don't get any foliage from where it originates right up to here so very large internodes and they're kind of useless on a small tree like this so in general I just prune them right off like that the really vigorous rocket branches because you just can't use them on your tree they're too coarse they're great if you want you know to thicken up a branch you let the rocket branch grow and mature and it'll really thicken the branch up but on a tree like this where I'm just trying to get you know fine branching ramification and character I don't want you know thick heavy coarse growth on it I will be taking a lot off this tree today which is good because it means the tree has grown really well over the summer and it has it's uh, done really well lots of branches coming right off right back another big one so here's another rocket branch if you see this one here again it shoots up from the base there's no foliage at all until way out here so it's just too too coarse looking so I've got to take that whole branch off like that and then I've got finer foliage I can develop here and those rocket branches they form because I'm probably fertilizing the tree too much um, watering and fertilizing the tree a lot you get you know rampant growth if I hold back the water and fertilizer a little more, I'll probably keep the tree a little more compact. So I'll have to start doing that in future as it gets, you know, closer to my design goals for the tree. And that's a, you know, it's a balancing act between vigor, keeping the tree healthy and vigorous, and keeping your growth compact. So you're always kind of balancing the two. Go too far in one direction, you end up with a fine, finely branched dead tree too far in the other direction it's too coarse and it just doesn't look like a miniature tree at all so it's a balancing act and on these cedars if you do not prune these this foliage all these inner branches will die off in favor of these vigorous shoots so you'll end up with a tree with all the foliage on the very outer edges it'll be you know large and you'll lose all that fine foliage on the inside. So it's important to prune all this heavy foliage back so you get light to the interior and vigor to the interior. So those smaller shoots have a chance to grow and develop. Another vigorous branch. Lots of good vigor in this tree, that's for sure. It has had a good summer of growth. And if you don't pinch these tips, you don't get a lot of back budding either. It'll just keep growing on the tips. So you've either got to prune or pinch the tips off to get back budding on the interior of the tree, if the tree is vigorous, which this one is. It's always nice pruning a tree after it's grown really vigorously. The tree has done its job of growing, and now it's time to prune it back again. It's always exciting. Here's another rocket type branch. I've got to reduce it way back, take it right off actually. Skinny kind of rocket branch. So we have the KW Bonsai Society meeting tonight. Uh, it's a bring a tree to the workshop. So I'll be bringing a tree tonight. And I was thinking, I think the large forest, that's a good one. It needs pruning. A lot of people in the club haven't seen the large forest for a couple of years so so this tree isn't supposed to be like an exact replica of the little cedar spirit tree it's just supposed to give the impression it's the same spirit uh, the struggle for survival 
the harshness of nature, should all be reflected in this tree. But you know, I'm not after getting every branch the same or anything like that. It's just an impressionistic interpretation of the original tree. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, good figure in this tree. Wow. And the exciting thing is it's growing over a rock. So someday I'll have exposed roots on the rock and it'll be really, really, really cool. And these cedars are they're a hard to kill tree. Not impossible to kill them, but they're they're pretty difficult to kill if you take care of them. They're hardy in the winter. They do require a fair amount of water to keep them happy, but other than that, they're pretty easy trees to grow. That's why you generally end up with so many cedars on your bench because they just don't die. Every one you get seems to make it for many, many, many years. And, uh, you know, some of the more tender species tend to die off and you lose the tree. But these cedars are survivors. Thuja's. Did I mention it's Thuja Thursday today? Not sure if I did or not. So my ear, this is the first day I haven't had to take pain pills like that. Uh, I don't know what I was taking, some over-the-counter thing. Uh, so that it's kind of nice. I, I don't have that intense you know, pumping with every heartbeat pain in the side of my head and my by my ear. So touch wood, I hope it's getting better. It's been a long time. Very painful. It reminded me, I had an abscess tooth the one time and it started hurting on Friday afternoon and I had to go the whole weekend. The dentist wasn't working on the weekend and I had to run cold water on my tooth. I had to keep an ice cube in my mouth to keep the pain down. I had to take pain pills and I just made it through till Monday and then the dentist saw me and he uh, drilled a hole to relieve the pressure in my tooth and uh, yeah oh my goodness it was so painful it's not fun being in pain it, it just it stops you thinking it's like all you can think about is the pain that's what I find like, I couldn't do much bonsai work when my ear was just pounding in pain you just can't concentrate it's like all you're worried about is the pain However, today, I'm feeling much, much better. I've still got to be careful. I'm taking drops from my ears. The doctor said I'm uh, highly susceptible to ear infections at this point in time, so I've got to you know, really be careful. Take my ear drops. Yeah, lots of uh, branches on this tree that will need thinning. I also want to say that it's Blue Jay Bonsai's birthday today, so happy birthday, Jay. <laughs> my, my ear is still blocked up. I can't hear much out of this ear. Like, it still works and everything. It's just all foggy. And it's not the ear passage that's blocked. That's clean. It's an infection behind the ear or uh, on the inner ear. So that's what the doctor said. So they cleaned out my other ear too, flushed it out with water, got all the canals perfectly clean. But I still can't hear out of this ear much. So I'm hoping, you know, over the next few days, maybe it'll clear and I can hear again <laughs> properly. Because <laughs> it's really hard. If someone calls me, I don't, I can't tell where the sound's coming from. I kind of have to look around and see who's calling me because I have no sense of direction in my hearing. And when I look back, this whole kind of history of the tree is on the channel. Um, right from when I first planted this as the little cedar spirit tree till now. I think I've been developing this tree for four years. So 
yeah so there's a playlist for this tree on the channel just go to the playlist tab search around on the tab or search around trying to find these playlists for the little cedar spirit tree and you can go through all the videos where I've worked on it and see exactly what I did when and that's what my channel is all about is showing the progression of trees over time and hopefully <laughs> they're progressing in a good way <laughs> which doesn't always happen on trees sometimes you go back and you look at a tree and say oh it was looking really good four years ago it's kind of declined now and not looking as nice so not every tree progresses in a good way sometimes they regress or degress or I don't know regress I guess is the word so yeah but with proper techniques and attention they should make progress they shouldn't be going the other direction and if they are then you've got to have a look at your techniques and your care and see what is causing it to go the opposite direction that you want change your watering or your fertilizing or your winter care you know things like that there's always a reason why trees decline and sometimes you know it's insect attacks that you can't really help unless you're spraying noxious chemicals all the time which I won't do like I said I'd rather I'd rather my tree die than me die of some cancer or something you know from using these chemicals on your trees and some chemicals aren't that harmful but uh, you know even soap and water is a chemical but I don't think there's any studies that show you know a little soap and water is going to cause your decline in health whereas some of these chemicals I mean you're supposed to wear masks when you apply them that's the funny thing I, I never see people with the mask on when they're applying these chemicals to their trees in videos or anything uh, I don't know maybe they just don't show you that part but got to be pretty careful and it might be different you know if you're a professional you make your living selling trees if a tree dies you know you're out a lot of money so in that case maybe you do suit up and you spray your trees but when you're a hobbyist you gotta weigh the benefits with the risk and to me like I said I'd rather my tree die than me you can always get another tree but you only get one body in life and you only get one life so you gotta make the best of it as far as we know anyway <laughs> every time I spin this tree around I'm finding more and more to prune there's lots of branches on it which is very exciting I, I it's got to be looking more compact now I haven't stepped back to have a look at it but you know, I've been pruning for quite a while here yapping away and pruning <laughs> okay I think I think I'm getting pretty close to getting all the foliage reduced back except for this one there so I, I, I'll probably do a little more pinching as I go but the next step is to stand back have a look at the tree and then uh, decide you know what needs cleaning up what branches I need to remove and all that kind of stuff because you know there's a lot going on with this tree now, as I said, there's some branches that have multiple branches coming from the tips that needs to be thinned out. I notice there's some branches overlapping other branches. and So, yeah, kind of pruning it back even more compact if I can. I'm stepping back, having a look at the tree now. So the actual silhouette isn't too bad. It's, uh, you know, it's not too bushy on top it's maybe a little bigger than I'd like but not too bad so I think next I'm going to come in and look at some of these branches 
and see if I can reduce them back even further, uh, going back into some of the older growth and the back buds. So I've kind of pruned all that new growth back. So now I've got to look for new opportunities to further reduce branches back and make them even more compact if I can. All right, so here's a good example of one. The branch comes from way up here. It's fairly long. I've got some foliage here and then I've got new foliage out of the tip. So I could reduce it back to this foliage and I will. So here I go. Reducing that branch back. One beside it, I think I can do the same. I've got healthy foliage back here so I can take the whole tip off like that. And that's about as compact as I can get that branch unless I get more back budding in the future then I can reduce it back. I've got a branch kind of growing over top of another branch here. I'm going to take that out. that. Get this one back a bit. I'll be doing more pinching as I go here. Trying to get everything even more compact. Pushing the tree in as tight as I can because you can always grow it out again but keeping it tight is difficult. More difficult. Growing is easy. The tree does it all for you. The pruning now, here's a branch here that I can also make more compact. I've got growth way back here, so I'll again take the tip off, use my back buds to develop the branch, or continue to develop the branch, but it, you know, reducing it in length. Here's another one. I've got a back bud here, so I can take the tip off. You know, really pushing the tree back. Same here. I'm not going to take that further. And you know, it's always, the further you go back, it can get, you know, maybe a little risky. Not too bad, but you know, you've got to judge how far you can take it back and still have the tree survive and grow. I've had the odd branch where I've taken it back quite far and the branch just died off instead of regrowing. So, you know, it doesn't always work out for you, but I would say 90% of the time it does. It's just, yeah, sometimes the branch doesn't continue to grow. You've kind of took a little too much off and it just uh, withered away. So in the apex, you can take them back tighter because all the vigor is in the apex. Down lower, you have to be a little more conservative with your pruning. But in the apex, you can go pretty severe. So here's another area you know, I've got this kind of branch growing up here and I've got all kinds of branches coming off of it. So I have an opportunity opportunity to take that branch back short. It won't be graceful and flowing, but you know, all these sharp bends and that will really add to the character of the tree. So I'm going to take it off right here. Big chop. Taking that whole top off the tree. Which should really improve the character of the uh, the tree. Get all this movement in the branches, which is, you know, it'll look very natural, angular movement. It won't look like it was wired like that. It'll just look very, very natural. Here's a look at everything I took off. You know, a lot. A lot of foliage. And there's what's left on the tree. So, exactly how I wanted it, sparse, full of character. I'm very happy with the looks of the tree. I think it's come a long, long way from when I first started it. My next step with the tree is to weed it and have a look at the roots and see how they're developing. Here's a look at the tree with a root over rock planting. So the roots are against the rock and there's just moss growing around them. And you can see there's a lot of liverwort, some of this scotch moss I gotta get rid of. And maybe even, you know, peel back some of this moss here to show the roots below. 
I can start exposing them a little bit. So let's get to work on the landscape. There's some other tree work going on in the neighborhood. Bigger trees than I'm working on. There's the tree work in the neighborhood. The old willow tree is getting a pruning. So there's the odd root here, like this one's dried up, but it was too high anyway. And, and you'll get that in a root over rock. Not every root will survive the procedure. Some will dry out. Okay, I think the next step, I'm going to give the tree a good watering. Maybe clean out some of the soil around the roots as I'm doing it. All right, here I go with the water. Oh, it is starting to rain. I thought I heard rain. Okay, well, we're going to have to maybe finish up here for today. I was almost done anyway. Uh, I do have to kind of recover up some of these roots here. Or maybe not. Maybe those are the ones sticking out too far in the air. And they need to air dry and the ones that are going down here will survive. I, I think I am going to air dry those off. Kill them off. Because I want all the roots gripping the rock really nicely. And there's too many roots. I don't want like all these fine roots coming down here. I just want, you know, you know, usually 12 to 25 surface roots is about right. And this is way, way too many. So I've got hundreds here. So I think, yeah, air, air, air pruning those off. They'll just dry up and shrivel up. The strong ones will survive. But there's the front of the tree. It's looking quite nice on the rock. The rock here, it's sitting in kind of a pocket of the rock, so Eventually the rock will be lifted up. It'll be a nice looking planting someday. It'll just take a little more time. These root over rock plantings aren't for the impatient. It's like a, a multi-year process just to get the roots over the rock and then established and then more years to start exposing them and that kind of thing. Okay, I'll give that a final rinse with the watering can. Let's fly in now and have a final look at my little cedar spirit tree. It's really nice to see my little cedar spirit tree developing character and age to the branches and the trunk, and now the roots. I think it'll be an exciting tree to follow into the far future. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.